continuing continuing the polymorphism we are discussing about overriding variables can we override variables you know we can override instance methods but you can't override private methods you can't override static methods you can't uh, override variables also it's not possible to override variables overriding is not applicable for variables other point we cannot override of variables today before going to talk about the abstract keyword i would like to talk about few miscellaneous things in java which is very important for you to know are you able to listen is this voice audible my dear brothers and sisters of nan so is it audible okay now let's get into the topic now see actually there are few observations which i would like to tell you suppose in a file you have three classes file or program you have three classes then you know for each class one dot class file is created what is that for each class one dot class is created number of dot class files is equivalent to number of classes do you understand that number of pens in the classroom is equivalent to number of students am i right or not each student obviously will get one pen similarly for each class one dot class file is created suppose you have 10 dot class 10 10 classes then 10 dot class files are created so number of dot class files created is equal to the number of classes in the program that is number 1 so the formula is n classes equal to n dot class <coughs> n dot class files is it clear for all of you know that is first one number 2 second one case 2 in a file you can have maximum of only one public class how many public classes sir in a java file you can have maximum of one public class in a java file or a java program maximum number of public classes in a file i mean you can say you can create separate files that is different but when you write a program in that program maximum number of public classes allowed is only one are you are you clear with this now so case 2 maximum i am talking about the number of classes in the file i am not saying that uh, in the folder understood or not you can declare any every class as public no problem with that but maximum number of public classes in a given file should be only one so maximum number of public classes allowed in a file or a program allowed in a file means in a single file i am talking is only one i'll prove it now let me just show you suppose this is your uh, water suppose this is your eclipse so let me just uh, quickly you can see this here already book test is public out of my over enthusiasm suppose i declare this also as public so i am making this public then immediately you have a compilation error can you see the the danger signal here danger symbol just a small red mark will come cross mark this is actually error read the error first the public type book must be defined in its own file if you want you can make it you can declare public but that file you should save that book class in its own file maybe what do you mean by this means if you declare a class as public if you declare a class as public then you should save that file with the name of public class name what name you should save that file with the name of a public class name 
we have two public classes. How can you save one program with two names possible? Are you following this or not? There is no Rajni Kant here. You know, if it is Rajni Kant, maybe it's possible, but here it's not possible. Okay. So what do you do then? We have only one possibility. What is that possibility? Save it with either book car, save it with either book test. Recommended is to save with the book test. Or if, if you want, you can put book also as public. There is nothing wrong in that. But the maximum number of public classes allowed in a single file is a one. Suppose if you take two public classes, you should save each class. Listen, Nana, listen here, all of you. You should save each public class in a separate file. And this leads to compilation error. So this is another miscellaneous point. This is what I see many of you getting confused while working with Eclipse. While doing Eclipse in the beginning, I thought to tell you this point. You, you, I used to see people declaring multiple public classes and coming to me. I always used to tell them that just take only one public class. Don't try to declare multiple public classes in a file. And the reason is this simple reason. Do you understand that now? For clarity on this, love you. Is voice audible, Durga ji? Bhagishri ji? Is it visible? Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> now are you clear with this point now? That is another point. Okay, next case three. What is case three? What is case three, dear folks? In a file, we can have. I think I already wrote that. Case three is if you declare a class as public, if we declare a class as a public in a file, then we should save it with the. We should save the file with the. Save the file with public class name. Okay. My dear folks, do you understand this? Next one, another scenario, case four. Suppose I have four classes in a file, so three or four classes. I'll just use Notepad for better understanding. I have class something like you know a. I'm keeping main method inside this public static void main string args array. again class B of course main is not mandatory I'm just trying to explain you class B class C these are all OCJP bits. What bits are? OCJP. Most of the time, you know, very simple basics. And sometimes people ask you in interviews also, which are very useful to you. Okay. And these are questions I keep students keep asking me continuously. So I have how many classes in this program? Three. So generally I told you to say with the name of class in which we declare main method. Here are two things you are going to observe. One, can we have multiple main methods in a program? That is first question. No. Yes, but that the answer is yes, but not in the same class, but in different classes. If you put in the same class, it becomes redeclaration. Redeclaration of anything is not allowed in programming. What is that? Redeclaration of a, anything is not allowed in programming. Not only what is that? A, methods, even class, even variables, even uh, constructors. And now we can have multiple main methods. In every class you can put one main method, but it's not recommended. Doesn't mean that uh, you should put multiple main methods. Don't think that. One main method is sufficient. Understood or not? No. To start engine, one key is enough. We don't need four keys. 
so now none of these classes are public i can save this program with any name not just a a or b or c if any class is public here then you should save with that public class but anyhow these are all default classes what classes sir if you don't use any access modifier i told you this then they are default so now i can save this with any name suppose i save them with the some test.java what is that select all files save this click on this over now now how to compile this when you save a program with some name you should compile with the same name but while executing so here just put some print statement system dot out dot print an offer again what is that system dot out dot print an offer system dot out dot print an offer are you following this now now save this with uh, any name of your choice because none of these classes are public and compile with the same name what you have sa saved this program but while executing you know see here now open command prompt i don't know where i had saved let me quickly check this it's correct perfect path so and e drive cd java pro cd java programs java c space test dot java we compile with the same name but while executing you cannot run with this name you cannot run with uh, with the uh, test dot test class while executing because uh, if you want to run any program then in that class you should have a main method execution must be done only from the class in which you have declared main method but test test is nothing there is no such class called test actually in this file and the second thing is we don't have main inside test main is there in a class b class and c class and it's not there in inside test something so here you should run with either java space a you should execute the program with the class name that is having main method inside that you can save with any name you can compile with the same name but execution must happen with class name that is having main method inside that i think this point is clear yes. that's all so again java space b you can run with that again java space c even eclipse i can have multiple mains and you can choose one suppose let me quickly when it, when it is eclipse suppose i remove public and then i put a main method here inside this classes suppose i take one more class class a again one more main something like this when you run this it will ask you to run from which class proceed so not this run as choose what is that run as so that it will ask can you see a here now so now you should pick one executable class because all the three are executable so book test is executable or either a is executable or either book is executable choose one i hope you understood all these things all these are very very important interview tips what tips sir also some important basics too some important basics you got clarity about this no i hope we had discussed most of the important miscellaneous uh, things still we keep discussing but i am going to switch to the next topic
So shall I stop this here now? So we are done with this part now, the basic part. I think you got an idea, right? Do you think we should declare only one main method in a class? Another important interview question. Maybe let me ask you this last question before going to. Can we override main method? No. Suppose there is a. Can we override main method? This is another entry question. Are you sure? Okay. Yeah. Here, uh, another important entry question. See here. Another related to polymorphism again. Let's talk about this. Can we override main method? That is the question. We can override methods. And we have discussed about the possibilities. Is it possible to override a main or not? Quickly discuss no. this. Yes, sir. No. Huh? No. Are you sure? Yes, sir. What what do you why why you are saying no? What is the reason? What is the reason? Yeah, exactly. Wonderful. Wonderful, my boy. Main is a static method. Can we override static method? No. no. Answer is there in static itself. If you override main, it's called method hiding. What do you call it as? A? Another question. Can we? We cannot override main because main is static. Overriding is not applicable for static methods. Still, if you override, it becomes a method hiding. Answer. Only JVM will just observe only that particular copy. Suppose many students doesn't have this idea, but you just just try to get this simple idea. This is simple point. So I'm trying to make sure you go, you understand the basic as much as possible. Suppose this is a test one. I'm just taking test one. Class A or A1. If A already exists, I will use A1. So in this, I am writing a main method. That's fine. So might be a might be existing already. So I am I took k one. Again, uh, I, just two classes are enough here. B one extends it. I'm just trying to make you understand many important observations. A one. Then here put something just only for testing, nothing to worry. You don't need to run also, just I am showing you the scenario. Okay, are you fine with this now? So next step. So do you think this is overriding? Do you think this is overriding my dear friends? JVM will see only one, it doesn't see two because in case of static methods, uh, super class method is not visible to JVM. When you override static method, JVM can see only method in the subclass. Because subclass method will hide super class method when you override. It's like you know moon covering sun. We have this, what do you call got this? Sir? We have this uh, what is that? Uh, you, you get this, the exact name, I forget that. What do you call this thing? Eclipse, yes. Lunar eclipse, solar eclipse. When this eclipse occurs, moon will cover sun. That is what lunar, huh? I don't exactly remember. Same thing here. The subclass method will, uh, will hide superclass method. So here there is no when you have three mains, sir, but JVM can see only one main if you have inheritance in the class. Do you understand? But you can run this class from anywhere actually. This program, either from B class or A class or even this test class. Do you understand this now? This is another important point. Okay, anyhow, overriding is not applicable for main method. Let's fix it. Next point, another point. Can we overload main method? Another important interviews because I had faced all this in interviews. I too had attended interviews, so many interviews. Can we overload, overload main method? 
all of you my dear uh, brothers and sisters of man can we overload main method overload not override yes or no yes or no how many of you say yes for overloading next one we cannot override which method main that's fine next one case 5 can we overload main yes or no i you, we had discussed overloading yesterday right now the question is is it possible to overload main method no answer is uh, we can overload which method main method what method main method see jvm has one specific main method that is always public static void main still works it should exactly look like that how it should look like the jvm main should be always this one but in the same class maybe i'll just show you i remove this two classes not necessary to test overloading i still i can have two more methods public so you know i think i didn't mention this point maybe you cannot override static methods but you can overload static methods or instance methods overloading is applicable for both static and instance is applicable for so we can overload main so suppose like this public static void main with the default you can have something like this there is nothing wrong in that hello just type what is that and here you can type something else hi you can have one more main with the uh, some integer as parameter something like this <coughs> public static void main int x plus print x how many overloaded methods are there now actually here the main is overloaded for three times you are uh, jvm will call only the first main method which main method main first main method see here even though we have three main methods or four or 10 jvm only look for this main which main public static void main string args array or string array args anything is fine whenever you are specifying this string again go to that not just string uh, string array it should be exactly same another important point in so many interviews people keep asking which of the following signatures are valid for main they put private static protected static and uh, instead of void they change int sometimes they remove static but listen observe carefully for jvm the main should be always like this public static void main followed by string args array should not be anything else no change anything any modifier anything maybe just in this whole signature you can only change this variable name what is that the args instead of args you can put rags no problem x you put no problem but apart from that no other change to the signature if you change maybe you may compile that code but you cannot execute it will say that i am i am not able to find main could not load main method something you get error like that are you following this mrs jay so that's the basic guide so here how do you call remaining two then maybe i'll put uh, <clears throat> but this is a starter obviously not the others these are all then you ask what about what about these two methods these are regular static methods what what static yes. normal static methods what kind of static methods sir yes. Normal static. Do you understand this or not? No. 
got clarity on this now. So, how do you call this? Here you can directly call main semicolon. Here you can call main of what is that? 20 semicolon. You know, I am trying to call directly because the remaining two methods are static. You know, very well, we can call or invoke one static method from another directly in the same class, of course. If it is different class, then we should use class name. What is that we should do? We should use a class name. Do you understand this now? So now you run this now. So run it. Then you got hi, hello, and Kundi, right? Do you understand this, my dear friends? Got clarity on this? So these are all uh, most of the important, what is that? Uh, interview questions, which generally I used to see. There's one more last thing I should discuss in uh, overriding, not overloading. I'm, I'm going to discuss about uh, the last concept in polymorphism, which we call covariant return types. What return types? Sir? Covariant return types. R E T U R N return T Y P E S. So maybe you ask me a question. What is a covariant return type? So we should tell understand that with a small example. Do you have idea about return types? Yes. Yeah, there is another two questions, two more entry questions. One. This is also one more. Does return type has any impact on overriding? I didn't I just ask you this. So you know overriding. Overriding means signature of method in superclass and subclass must be same. Is it mandatory? Obviously mandatory, but there is a small exception which I didn't discuss with you. However, even though the signature must be same, we can have a small exception. We can have a change in the return type. What is that? We can have a change in the return type. Not as according to our wish. Not as we wish. That return type must be covariant return type. What return type? It cannot be anything what you like. It should be what is that? Covariant return type. Then immediately. Mrs. Jaya will ask me, what do you mean by covariant return type? I know return type, but I don't know what is covariant return type. Then I should answer this now. Let me tell you. Do you have an idea about uh, hierarchy, inheritance hierarchy? I'll tell you. Uh, while discussing inheritance, you know, a superclass is inherited to a subclass. So, Return type covariant means it's all about, uh, you should have a bit of idea about inheritance here. Suppose I have a class, I'll just explain with a small example. Leave this test class like that. Shall I remove this main methods? I hope I had done with this discussion. Shall I move forward? Take a class here, class A1 as usual, as I remove that. Another class, uh, V1 extensor A1. A1. Okay, that's fine. Now I am declaring one method here which returns which returns a what is that? A public object M1 inside that return return 10 you'll be wondering what is this here object actually I, I think i should quickly tell you this again i'll talk about this anyhow you know while discussing inheritance uh, there is one point uh, i forgot to tell you object is uh, a class actually what is that uh? not the object which you create it is a super class, predefined class, available in Java.lang package. What package? 
rank of page. You know, one more important point. Every class in Java is directly or indirectly inherited from which class? Object class. Every class in Java is directly or indirectly inherited from object class. You don't need to inherit anything. You don't need to do anything. Are you following? Nothing like you need to inherit. Understood now. So, that is object. We'll talk more on this. But as of now, what is an object class? It is a predefined super class which is inherited to any class in Java by default. Every class directly or indirectly is inherited from object class. Do you understand that now? Next one. Covariant. Let's talk about this now. Suppose I'll ask a quick question. If object is super class, the string is a subclass or not? String is a subclass. Which is subclass? Sir? String obviously is a subclass. And because other than object, every class is a subclass of a string. I mean, sorry, a subclass of a object. Even string is a subclass of object. I'm just taking this tool because you have an idea about string right now. And object just now I had discussed. Anything is object in Java, an integer, a string, a decimal, everything is object. Do you understand the point or not now? Any kind of data is object because object represents everything in Java. Do you understand that now? I hope that it's not difficult to understand this point. Any kind of data is treated as what object? What, what data? It can be object. So now, if you look this, you, are, you say that return 10. Here 10 is an object actually. Object type. What type? Of? of course, this is not primitive. I'll talk more about this concept of references. How integer becomes object type? In topic called wrapper classes. What classes sir? Wrappers. When I go there, switch there, I'll talk on that. But this is 10 is object. I'm returning 10 here. And return type is object. And in subclass, I'm using you know, right? Overriding means sir. Signature must be same. But implementation might be different. But we can have a small change in what is that? Term. Then you are returning 10, you can return 20 here, no problem. But covariant return type means this is return type which is a parent class. What class? Sir? Object is the super class of all classes. So this is a parent. Now, here with the, the subclass overriding method, I can change the return type. Here the return type can be a subclass of what is that term? object. What is that term? Either it must be object or the return type here can be a subclass of which one? Object. So can I put string here now? Is string a subclass of object or not? If here in overridden method, if return type is a parent in overriding method return type can be its a chain in simple way to understand if this is object here then here it can be string and string is a chain of which one object this is covariant return type what return type are? might be you ask me a question sir why we get error here string means it must be in what port sir you are returning integer, but you should return what is that? Double. I mean, I'm sorry, you should return string. You are returning integer here, but you should return what is that? String. So, any error now? Does your error is removed or not? Yes. And this is what covariant return type is all about. 
this is what covariant return type is all about do you understand this uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen not clarity on this Bhagishri ji yeah see this is overriding right when you override a method go for dynamic method dispatch what dispatch it so you create object like this you create something like this a space a1 space some a equal to new and then call a dot so what is the output here is it 10 or 20 what's your output here 10 or 20 huh? are you sure yes let me run it quickly so you get output now as how much Of course, it's returning. Then you should pass it to which method? Print statement. When it returns value, I told you this. Either we should initialize it to a local variable or you should pass it to print method. Do you understand this, friends? So now run this, you get output 20. What 20? Yes. That's it. Anyhow, you can go. Now we are almost done with the polymorphism. But one last question. What is that? Now I am done with this. The last and final question here is, uh, suppose I, I, I think I had discussed this yesterday. Suppose I have a overloaded method. What method? Suppose, uh, leave, are you okay with the covariant now? Yes. Is it clear to all of you? Let me switch to the next topic. That is, uh, what is that? Uh? Suppose, I have a overloaded method. Something like, uh, uh, public uh, into sum of something like this. Index comma into y that is one maybe you can say return sum zero leave about it again public uh, double sum of index comma into y return zero now here if you see I had changed. There is a change in return type. Can you observe this? Here it is int, it is a double. But the point is, return type doesn't participate in overloading. Change in return type doesn't cause any impact on the overloading. When you overload, you should always consider three things. What is that? The name of the method, number of parameters, type of parameters change in parameters must exist not change in return type change in return type doesn't have any influence on overloading do you understand that now still you have that compilation error there because why you didn't modify the parameters some students come and ask me sir I will change here a comma b then is it fine it's not about naming different variables it's about having change in the type or number of parameters so suppose you remove all these parameters you immediately your error is removed because this signature is different this signature is different i hope this is clear now these are all the most important points you should understand while discussing what is that polymorphism the whole polymorphism I hope this is clear for a lot do you understand this now 
So that's all, friends. So I can tell that you are done with polymer. No more interview questions. No more topics in polymorphism now. Completed. Everything is discussed, including miscellaneous questions. I hope this is clear for all of you now. Yes,